Welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to work on a crochet pet bed and this is available in four different sizes from small all the way to extra large. So before we start this pattern, let's listen to this real quick and then we're going to carry on from that point. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So today's pattern is available in four different sizes. On screen now I'm going to put the sizes and the rough species that you can match to your own pet. So let me just hold here for a moment and then you can just see what size that you need to do in order to play today. Okay so let's look into the pattern more carefully. We have four different sizes and you can see that there's different colors here on the pattern for the four sizes that we have. We have small, medium, large and extra large and you have to determine which size that you want to do. I've determined that this cat is sitting on the medium size and there's also a dog photo sitting on the medium size as well and this is a really kind of a neat uh, kind of gauge. I think for my particular cat medium is the best way to go so she can stretch on out and then you can see the different sizes that I provided earlier. But let's take a closer look at what's going to happen in today's pattern. Let's look at the assembly first because that was something that was confusing me right off the bat. So let's cover the construction of this particular bed. So we have two bases. We have one that is sitting on top of the existing carpet that we have here and then we have the other one which is identical where the cat is sitting on top of. So we have two bases, one and two. There's quilt batting that is separating those two and what's gonna happen is that this uh, top and the bottom are going to be um, put together and it will be like a pillow itself. We're then going to do a strip that wraps it completely around it and then we join it at the end. So not only is there a raised ridge that you see here, this ridge sinks all the way back down to the very base right here. So this allows any kind of heavier pet to really nest into the bed uh, really quite nicely. So the cat's kind of sitting on the top here and uh, it's actually not a hard thing to do. So you have only a couple sections. There's also is called a crochet button and essentially in the center of this and let me just get an actual existing one here. In the center you're going to notice that there is going to be a hole. So you're going to create a little miniature button with crochet that you're going to sew and it's going to sew right down into the other base so that you're going to cover this hole but it also stabilizes the quilt batting inside of the project as well. So it's one of those things where it's something that needs to be done afterward. So as I mentioned there's quilt batting that is separating the two panels. I'm gonna do the other panel with you live on camera. I've already done one because they're identical. So what I noticed it's asking for a two inch quilt batting that will separate these and then what I did is that I went to Walmart because that's my closest craft store and I couldn't find the two inch but I noticed that they have ones that just have miniatures like this. It came as a big roll and what I did is I'd rolled it out to the fact that I got pretty much my two inch span that I wanted. So in actual fact there's one and two, three, four, five and six layers of quilt batting here. So what you want to do at the, when you get these round circles done, you just want to lay it over top and then I just took some scissors and I got pretty close to the outside of this. So when I'm ready to put these together, I'm going to be able to sandwich that inside and then the crochet button is gonna go down in the middle here to create that um, that stabilization of that batting inside. So that's something that you can look for. You can either get the two inch or just do what I did and just make do and just grab the, the quilt batting that you can, can from the craft store. So here's a sample of the small size just like you see. It goes relatively quickly I have to say. It's a big fat hook, two yarn strands. It goes really quick. So what I had uh, Daniel do is make me a diagram. So what we have here is the blue and you can see that these are the number of rings that it took to make the blue or to make the small size. So we're gonna notice that I had him do the pie shapes because we have to incrementally increase which I'll talk about as we're crocheting this. So I'm only gonna do the small with you on camera but if you're going to do the medium, large or extra large, the increments just get bigger and bigger by one digit as you're going. So for example in round number six the final here it was uh, two double crochets in the first one and then the four double crochets in a row. So then if you're going then to the medium size then it's two double crochets in the first one and then it's gonna be five double crochets in a row. So then it's gonna be six and seven and eight and nine, ten, eleven and twelve. So it's just a matter of understanding that you're doing a pie shape. So I don't need to take you through all of the different sizes and create multiple videos because this is the only thing that you have to watch for. The pattern is also stating for that as well. So let me take you back to the pattern and indicate that for you. 
So we're here back at the pattern and this is page number two. So the base was made up of small, of the small size one through six. How do I know that? It didn't say small. Well they all start off the same way. Then if you're going to continue along and you want it bigger then you're going to do this set of instructions which is the medium, large and extra large and that takes you all the way to round number nine. So if you want to end your medium then this is where you're gonna stop. So for those continuing on with the large you're just gonna end at extra large. You continue on with the next few rounds and then stop here in round 12 if you want it to stop at large and then if you're doing the extra large you just continue along. So what you're seeing here is that these are the increment uh, increases just like I explained earlier and it's just like the circle that I showed you already. You, you can see that you're just getting bigger and bigger as you make the pie shapes um, get bigger and bigger as you're getting out. So it's actually kind of a neat idea. So I think we're good to go. Let's uh, begin to work on this project together. So today's project requires you to use a nine millimeter size M as in Mikey crochet hook but I don't have that in stock so I'm just substituting with an N as in Nancy 10 millimeter. You're also going to need further on for the crochet button a six millimeter size J crochet hook in order to play. So without further ado let's grab our two strands of yarn. We're going to use the larger hook then for all of the sections except for the button and we're gonna put those together as if it's one strand and this basically doubles this chunky yarn as it is. So let's create a slip knot and let's pretend both of those yarns are operating as one and we're going to insert our hook into that. So we just put them together like it's just one strand and we are going to do a total of chaining of four. So just wrap the hook and pull through. So one, two, three and four and now insert the hook into the beginning chain and yarn over pulling it through and through and this here right in the center is your center of your bed. I want you to lay down the stragglers down on top of around the ring so it gets stuck as we move on to round number one. So let's begin round number one. All sizes are affected by this uh, particular area in the small and then you're gonna continue with medium, large or extra large if you would like to go beyond what we're doing. In today's tutorial I'm also going to have in what is called the sound alerts and I'm going to be stopping in increments so that you can get caught up and stay caught up with me the whole time. So let's begin round number one. We're going to chain three. So one, two and three and I want you just to double crochet. Leave the stragglers down on top in the middle and go right into the center and double crochet a total of 11 times. So the chaining three counts as a double crochet in this pattern uh, here and throughout and so then you'll have a total of 12 double crochets in the circle by the time you're done this round. So you'll notice it's nice and thick and bulky. That's exactly what you want. Choose a yarn color that makes sense for your pet as well. You know mine uses a litter box of, of course it's a cat. So you wanna choose colors that are not too sensitive uh, with cats that, or any kind of pet that may be dirty and of course this yarn is machine washable as well as the batting as well so that it's something that you can address later if your pet does get dirty. So just continuing to double crochet into the center a total of 11 additional times other than the chain and you should be able to count 12 as you go. Sometimes you do drop that extra strand. So I'm just gonna count. So count the, 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 um, the posts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and just keep pushing things out of the way. 11, and 12. So with that chaining of three that you counted at the very beginning that counts as one of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve and just slip stitch to the beginning of the top chain three to finish off round number one. So you'll be putting a button over this hole that is right in the center. Let's carry on to round number two. So now we're gonna start our activation with the sound alerts as we continue now because I'm just gonna show you the repeat stages in order to go all the way around in a circle. So to begin we're going to chain up three. So one, two and three and in the same one you did the join I want you to double crochet just like this. So in round number two each one of the stitches all the way around is gonna get two double crochets. So please do that. So one and two. Okay and then do the next one. One and two. So please do that all the way around for round number two. I'll see you at the end of this round. 
So when you get all the way back around don't mistake this one over here as being a, an additional stitch. It's part of this one here and you should have 12 groups of two stitches in each as you're going all the way around. So just finish it off by just slip stitching to the top of the first chain three and that concludes off round number two. So you see how it just brought everything closer together. So let's go round number three. We're going to chain up three. So one, two and three and we're gonna double crochet in the first one of the same join. So you're gonna do that on every size uh, even just beyond the medium or beyond the small, uh, medium, large and extra large, same thing. And this time around is gonna be one double crochet sitting by itself and then here's the repeat pattern for the remaining of this round. So the next one will get two double crochets. So one and two and then the next one is gonna get one double crochet by itself. One. Okay, so the repeat pattern again is two into the next one and then one, two and one. Please do that all the way around for round number three and I'll see you at the end. So as you come up to the end of round number three, the last stitch here will just be one double crochet by itself because you're keeping it in count. So the last one had two in there. So this must be just one by itself. So then just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three. So that was round number three. Let's move along to round number four. So hopefully you're understanding the increments and we'll again cover that. Round number four, chain up three, one, two, three and then double crochet into the same one. So there's your two into the same one and in round number four the next two are going to be by themselves. So just double crochet once into the next two, one and two and then the next one has two double crochets into it. So this is your incrementing, increasing. Okay, so just to repeat this again. So you're gonna put two into the next one or two, one into the next two, I apologize and then two into the next. So please do that all the way around for round number four. So coming up to the end of round number four, there happens to be two in this one. I'm keeping count and then the final two that are left is just one double crochet each. So just maintaining the pattern as you know it. We're on round number four and in the small size that I'm doing there's only two more rounds left. So you can see that this project doesn't take that long and even if you're continuing to the other sizes it grows really quick because of the double thickness of the yarn. So let's begin round number five. You're gonna chain up three and one double crochet in each uh, into the same one. So this time in round number five the next three are going to be one double crochet each. Okay. You can see that on the pattern as well and you can see that the incrementing is making it turn out like perfect as a circle and now the next one is two double crochets into the same one. So let's just quickly review what we're doing with this one. Round number five is gonna be two into this one here and then three by themselves. So please do that all the way around for round number five and then join me at the end of round number five as we move to round six. So let's finish off round number five. I was keeping counts and I'm just going to join to the top of the ch chain three. So round number six is the final round for the small size and then I'm gonna get this done. So chain up three to start and then one double crochet into the same one. So round number five it the increment increases again. So the next four are gonna be by themselves this time. So we just immediately go right into the next four. So one, two, three and four and then two double crochets into the next. So please do that all the way around for round number six. So there's four by themselves and then two, four and then two and so on. So let's finish this up together and we're just finishing off round number six and this is the end of the small size and the medium, large and extra large carries on from this point. If this is your second circle do not finish this yarn off completely. If this is your first one finish off, fasten off and then do a second one of these. But before we begin that process of putting things together let me just take you back to the chart for those that are continuing on with the rest of the sizes. So for those that are continuing along right in the blue is where we've just done the small size. So then you're gonna carry on and go continually bigger. So I put the numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to number 12. Those are the increments. So for example when we started off we put two into the first one and in this last one that we just did round number um, six that we just did is that there was four double crochets in a row and then it was two and then four. So the next ones that we do there will be two double crochets in the first one and then five. The next one is two double crochets and then six 
And so those are the number of double crochets that will sit by themselves as you get bigger. So if you're going into the medium size you're going to need to just do three more rounds. For the rest of the sizes you're gonna continue. For the large you'll do an extra three after the medium and then for large you have all that. So the large size is a total of 12 um, double crochets in a row and then two, 12 and then two. So please do that and then what we're going to do in this part of the tutorial you need to do two circles. If this is your second circle just leave it attached to the yarn and we're gonna get our cotton batten out or sorry our quilt batting out and then we're gonna put that together next. So right underneath here I have my quilt batting. I already explained earlier before I couldn't find the two inch size. I went to Walmart and I just got a whole roll of it and then I just laid it down over top and I created my thickness that I wanted. So there's one, two, three, four, five and six layers of the quilt batting. So I have one circle completely done and now my other one that I just finished is now ready to go. So what I want to do is that I want to sandwich this quilt batting inside of this as I go around. So what I want to do is that I want to single crochet myself all the way around but going through both at the same time to trap it in. So the best way to do it is just take your quilt batting out of the mix right now and just simply just grab your yarn okay and the other one. Now these are both exactly the same circle. So what you just can do is that you're going to start up and you're going to chain up one and you're gonna go right through this stitch on this one and just grab any stitch on the other one if you want to. Just grab any stitch, pull through and just single crochet. And you're going to then move to this next stitch on the front one and go right through to the back one and you're going to put these together with a single crochet. So you just keep moving about halfway around and then halfway around we want to set in that cot that batting in and of course I'm getting other yarns mixed in here. <laughs> And uh, I want to set in that uh, the batting in place before I get beyond the halfway mark so that it's much easier for me to get to. So you're creating a sandwich look at this point and then the cotton batten will sit right in the center. So I'll do that and I'll be right back when we get to the halfway. So I'm about the halfway mark I've created a little mini pocket. So what I want to do is grab my cotton batten now and I want to place this on the inside and I want to make it really puff up. I did it a little bit extra so that it would puff up really quite nicely. Um, and the worst thing you could do is make that cotton batten too small. So what I want to do is just take my time and just kind of position it on the inside. Do you good, a good job. Your pet's gonna love you for it. Um, if you get it all lumpy and not equal then it becomes kind of uncomfortable. So make sure you kind of stretch it around and now you're going to continue then to single crochet and then making sure that the cotton batten is staying on the inside of the project like so. So continue to single crochet yourself all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm single crocheting everything completely done so the the quilt batting is inside permanently and all I just want to do then is once I get all the way back around is that I'm going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet and that's it. So we're gonna fasten off that yarn and you're gonna notice it's gonna be nice and soft at this point. So let me just see a side angle just like this and so you got nice soft so that your pet can rest and then you're going to then just trim off this yarn and then you're gonna wanna use a nice darning needle in order to get rid of this straggler. We don't want any strings hanging around um, for your pet beds at all. So what I would do is individually string by string I would use a darning needle and hide those in and I'll be right back. So let's hide in the string and we're just gonna put the yarn through a darning needle. Now the trick to hiding yarn ends is to go in and out of the project three times. So just diving right into the fibers right underneath the stitches. You don't wanna impede on any of the appearance on the outside. Just going back and forth a total of three times. So whenever we go to fasten off our ends that's the best way to do it. So just pull through and then go back in the other direction for two. and the other direction for three. My angle is more for your convenience of seeing than it is for mine. So I'm, I'm a little bit struggling up here a bit. And then once you get that done back and forth three times you can safely cut that right out. And so I'm gonna do the same with the other strand and then we're gonna move on in today's project. So what we're gonna do now is that we're going to do the edging. So what's gonna happen in the edging? It's going to attach to this area right here. So as I mentioned in the very beginning the edging is gonna come up so that the pet can actually go inside and the edging can kind of make it feel more safe because it's kind of boxed in, in, in there. So the bottom will just be completely as is and then the top will then will have this lip that comes off just like so. Just like so. so let's do that strip edging now. 
So let's go back to the pattern. We're going to do the edging. Now the edging are different sizes depending if it's small, medium, larger, extra large. So the number of chain counts that you're going to do vary on the size of your, of your bed that you've done. So for myself for the small it's gonna be 72. If you're doing the other sizes just follow those sizes instead. And then the stitch work is still the same regardless on the size. And then we're going to continue and I'll show you how to do the repeat patterns as we go along. And then it says to continue to do the, the same stitches until the edging measures a certain distance. So it's either five, five, six, or seven depending on your size. So this is what we're going to do next. And then we're going to do this edging and then we're going to attach it to the project after we're done. So let's move along to doing the edging. So let's begin to do the edging once again and using two strands just like you see as one. We're just gonna put them together and we're gonna do the edging just like you see. So depending on the size that you're doing, I'm doing small. So it's either gonna be chaining 72, it's gonna be 102, 170, or 200. It all depends on the size that you're working on. So for my case, it's gonna be 72. So let's just start creating a chain and counting. We're not gonna do the whole thing of course. So one, two, three, four, and five and go to the size that you want for your size of bed. So for myself I have my chaining of 72 done. You could have a 72, 102, 170, or 200 depending on your size. But all of us are gonna continue now in the same thing for row number one. We're gonna count four chain from the hook. So just count one, two, three, turn it over and get to the fourth one of the back loop. And you're going to double crochet. So for all of us what we're going to do is that we're just gonna double crochet ourselves in the back loop of your entire chain. Just one double crochet in each. So we're not doing the ribbing yet. That's coming up real soon but we have to establish this before we can start even thinking about ribbing. So please just do one double crochet in each of the chains all the way across. So I've now just double crocheted myself all the way back to the other side of the chain. So that's all good. So you'll notice that this will grow pretty quickly. So let's re, uh, do row number two. So we're gonna start our ribbing next. We're going to chain two which doesn't count, uh, which counts as a half double crochet, I'm sorry. So the first one will be half double crochet in and uh, there will be one half double crochet in the very end of the, of this chain on the other side just like there. But now we have to establish the ribbing. So these posts that you're down here are gonna be what's gonna create this ribbing. So we're gonna start our very first one. We're gonna do a, a double crochet front post. So we're gonna wrap the hook and instead of going into the stitch we wanna go around into the post. So just coming in from the side just like this, yarning over, pulling it through and then pull through two and two. So that's a double crochet front post and the next one will be a double crochet back post. So here's the post. So we wrap the hook and we come from the back, push it out through the frontward and then push it out through the back again and then push, pull through and then pull through two and two. So it's just gonna be repeating of these two stitches all the way across. Doesn't matter which size that you're working on, it's the same. So the next one's a front post. So wrap the hook coming into the front post, pull through, pull through two and two and then the next one is a back post. So just coming from the back. So wrap coming from the back and then push it back out to the back, pull through, pull through two and two. So continue to do that front post, back post, all the way down to the end of your row. I'll see you at the end. So in coming up to the end of the row, the last turning chain here is a half double crochet. So just go right into the chain itself. Don't go into a space. Go right into the chain and you're gonna half double crochet. So that was row number two. So we're just gonna turn our work and you're gonna notice that the ridges are really standing out now. So now we're gonna match exactly what we see. So whenever there is a front post double crochet that you see here, you're gonna match it with the front post double crochet and same thing with the back, you're just gonna match. So to begin, we're going to chain two and then we're gonna immediately jump to the first one. So the first one is in front of us, we can see that, you see the, the ridges and you're going to make that one a continued front post double crochet, so just match it and the other one is sunken in behind and you're just gonna match that and be a back post double crochet. That's all you have to do for this row. So the remaining of the rows are all identical to what you're seeing. So you're just matching it. So the next one is a front post double crochet. So make it a front post double crochet and the last one is a back post double or the next one is a back post double crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go all the way across and now your goal now is to get this to be a certain height. So if you remember it was either five inches 
or six or seven depending on your size. So what you're just gonna do is you're gonna take a tape measure and I'm looking for that off camera here. Let's take a tape measure and you're going to measure the distance. So I have to go a total of five for myself. So you can see I got a little bit of work to do before I get there and then I'm just gonna go back and forth get into my about five inches and then stop and then that is done. So if you're doing the, the larger size it'll either be six or it'll be seven just like you see. So the ridges really uh, matter uh, for the size of the bed. So continue just to repeat this row back and forth continuing up the ribs just like you see it and when we come back I'll have this done and then we'll show you how to attach it to your bed. So off camera I did my five inches as you see and this was actually not too hard and then basically I'm going to join these together with the slip stitch. So we're just gonna go in and I'm just gonna go right underneath and I'm gonna go to the other side. So just make it a complete circle just like you see and you want to go to the other side roughly in the same spot and you want to join it with the slip stitch. So just pull through and through just make sure everything's nice and tight and then just work your way down the edge just kind of working on one side and then go through I'm just making sure I get enough strands and then go to the other side and pull through. So your goal is is to slip stitch this edge together as you work your way down. So going into the next section and next. Pull through, through and through. So just slip stitch down so you're gonna create the full ring of your outside edge before you're going to attach it to your, your project. Now it says to fasten off in this set of instructions once we get this done. Um, I, I'm not sure I would do that uh, especially in the order that I've done today's tutorial but if you've done it in a different order then maybe it makes sense. But for myself I'm going to leave this yarn attached at the base. Now the slip stitch line always looks slightly different than the rest of the project. So what you might want to do here is that you might wanna turn it inside out like this. It's up to you on the way that you want to do it and just stretch it out. So once you get that done just stretch and now our goal is to add this to the, the base. So I'm bringing back the base just like you see here. I have my round circle so I'm gonna leave the yarn attached I'm just gonna create, a, gonna create a larger loop and I'm gonna use that loop. So what we want to do is that we want to slightly stretch this so that it matches the diameter of the existing here. So what I would do if I were you and you were me, I would take some other yarn that you have maybe just like so and what I would do is I would kind of use another yarn um, hook and what we're going to do is that we're going to attach it to where it's joining. So see the top of the pillow face? This is the join. So what I want to do is just attach and we are just going to kind of just roughly put it together like so. So because it has to be stretched if you, you can't just follow stitch by stitch along the outside of this and it will match. So what I would do is probably turn it 90 degrees or sorry um, 180. So right directly across make it look as close as possible and then grab more of the spare yarn and then just attach it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in several spots all the way around. Therefore I know that when I go to attach these together that I know that it will be close and you get it and so your pet will sit inside of this area. So continue to attach these as you uh, go and then I'll be back and then I'll show you how to actually fasten it together. Okay so I'm back and what I've done is that I've just taken the strands and I've just secured it so I can grab the top and it won't fall off. So I just went off just like you see and so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna grab the loop that I left on for this and I'm gonna pull it tight and what I want to do is that it, not every stitch is gonna match each other. So what you have to do is just you just have to just eye it up. So coming straight down in to an outside one of these single crochets all you're just gonna do is just you're just gonna slip stitch. So just pull through and through. So then moving to, this, to the next one. So try to use all these and then just eye it up on the edging itself and to attach. The goal is, is not to leave any excessive gaps that your, your cat or your pet will wanna dig through. So you just wanna do it nicely and tight. Just kind of eye it up and just slip stitch yourself. Now with slip stitching just remember to be a little bit easy with the tension. Um, slip stitching can be relatively tight and you might over tighten it. So just uh, so right now I'm kind of too tight. Let me just release that out back out. I just want to be a little bit looser than normal 
and so that I'm gonna have this nice line that goes all the way around. So just eyeing it up as you go and then just you can remove the, the markers that are holding that, that down as you go if you want to or you can do it at the end. So just slip stitch all the way around the edge and I need a better angle in order to do this so I'm just gonna put this on my lap and just fasten as I go all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this. So I'm coming up all the way around and I have just slip stitched myself all the way around. I'm actually pretty happy with it to be quite honest with you and I'm now just slip stitching to the first one. So that's it. So you can see that's got, it's awesome. So I want to just trim my yarn enough that I can just use my darning needle to sew or to fasten in the loose ends. Again one at a time like I would shown you before just put a, uh, the, the yarn through a darning needle. So to get rid of the loose ends you're just gonna put it onto a darning needle like so and you're just gonna go back and forth a total of three times. So one and then back in the other direction through a different path but close to it and a different path so you get a different group of fibers. Two and then back through one more time for a third time. Third time is a charm. And then once you get it that third time you can just safely just trim out your work and do that with the other one as well. So at this point in the tutorial I have this all secured. You can see that the pet can go right to the edge on the inside just like so. So it can really sandwich itself in. But what's missing? The, the button right? So here's what the bottom looks like. Nice and stable. This here because it's double stranded it's exceptionally tight. I can actually see my cat wanting to use this for sure. Um, she does like to be nice and nestled into things. So now we have to put that button here in the middle to secure the batting into place and also that it secures it to the base on the other side as well. So let's uh, begin doing the button. So with the smaller hook a size J six millimeter I know it's going <laughs> to feel really weird because you've been doing double stranding the whole time but you will uh, appreciate going back to a smaller hook. So let's just, just create a slip knot to begin and we are going to do a total chain of two. So one and two and what we're going to do then is in the first chain what we want to do is sing, uh, eight single crochets. So just jump back. It's the second chain from the hook which is the first one and eight single crochets. So one, two and this is gonna be really tight in the center but it's the button so you want it to be this is three and four, five, six, seven and eight. And once you get your eight done you're just going to slip stitch it to the top of the first one. If you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. It's exactly where I was about to go. So I've been crocheting long enough that I can tell that without having to do that but that's a great little tip in case you need it. Just like that. So let's move along to round number two. So in round number two I'm gonna bring back the sound alerts because it's a repeat pattern it's going all the way around. So to do round two is just one uh, chain one and it's gonna be two single crochets into each stitch going all the way around. So put in two single crochets in each and I'll see at the end of this row for a round for round number two. So I've come up all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that I had started and now we're going to begin round number three. Round number three again is another repeat pattern. So you're gonna chain up one. The first one is gonna get two single crochets like we did before and now the next one is just one single crochet by itself. So one. Okay so the repeat pattern is the next one is gonna get two singles. So one and two and then the next one gets one. Please do that all the way around for round number three. So I'm finishing up on round number three and then I'm just going to join it to the first one. So you're thinking gee that button's really big. Don't worry about it yet. We're gonna get it smaller again. So now we're going to go for round number four. Very easy round. We're just gonna chain up one and then one uh, single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. So just do one single crochet in each. I'll see at the end of this round. So when you get back all the way around just join it to the top of the first one. You're gonna notice that it's gonna start buckling and it's gonna start um, bowling up. Make sure that it bowls the other way. Okay so make sure it goes this way as you're going all the way around instead of more like that. So make sure you go the other way. So round number five we're going to start decreasing. So we're gonna chain up one and we're going to do a single crochet together. And so the very first one you're gonna go in, pull through and then you're gonna go into the next stitch, pull through and then pull through two and that's a single crochet two together and then you're gonna do one single crochet into the next. 
So, okay, so the next two are gonna be joined together with the one single crochet two together. So just pull through and then go to the next one, pull through and then pull through two and then one single crochet in the next. Again, you're gonna notice that bowling so go the other direction. Okay, so I'm gonna show one more time. So the next two are together with a single crochet together. Pull through and then single crochet the next. Okay, very easy round generally. See you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up to the end of round number five and the last one is a single crochet. You're going to join it to the first one of the single crochet two together. So we're gonna uh, do one more round and then that's it for this and so we're gonna chain up one and a single crochet two together all the way around. So just coming into the first one, pull through, next one, pull through, pull through two or all through all, all of those loops. Okay, so put the next two together. So pull, pull through, pull through, pull through all three and do that all the way around. There's only a total of eight of these going all the way around and this will create the button that appears in there. So we're not gonna stop this button at all. This is just a, a filler just to fill in that upper one and it's also used to attach the top and bottom uh, bases together as well as keeping that um, the batting in control in the middle. So just continuing to go around. You're gonna notice it's gonna be like a, a ball at this particular point and then that was it. So we're just going to join it to the first one and what I want to do is just join it with a slip stitch and you're done. But make sure you leave on extra long yarn here because you're going to use that to attach it down on top of the face. So let's uh, just pull that through that loop, pull that spare yarn and we're gonna use that to sew in later. So this is your button. So what you wanna do is that you just wanna flatten it out. So you can leave that straggler in there if you want to and just uh, flatten it out like this. So this is what it looks like on the back and this is what it'll look like on the front. So let's attach this button to the middle of the section down here. Okay, so what we want to do is that I left on the strand here and I want to put it into darning needle. The, the angle is not great for me to be able to do this personally but I want to show you how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna take this needle and I'm gonna go down through the project and I'm gonna flip it and get roughly to the same spot on the other side and I'm gonna pull through. So there's no button on the back just in the front and just pull all the way through until I can't pull anymore and then I'm just gonna turn it over and just kind of align that button properly here. So now I want to just jump down in the next section here and come all the way back. Now you, it's the same color yarn so you can either um, just make sure you try to get to the same area and it's the same color yarn so you can go right to the top edge if you wanted to or if you just wanna stay underneath it's up to you and then just pull all that through. So as you're pulling it through you're gonna notice it's gonna get tighter and the goal is it's kinda have it sink in a little bit. So you're gonna come down into the next section and go all the way to the other side like so. and then back out the other side. It's kind of a, it's not an exact science, right? Just make it look good. And all the way back out here. And then down. So what I'm gonna do is I'll leave the rest of the button for you to be able to put into position and then I'll be back and then we'll finalize today's project together. So my button's in position. I'm coming last section here. It's nice and tight on the front side and then all I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna get rid of this straggler. So I'm just staying on this back side. This is the bottom and I'm gonna create a knot like so. So remember the secret to doing this was to go back and forth in the yarn strands three times. So just one Go through a slightly different path. Two. And back on the other path. Three. So three times is a charm. You can see it's sunken down on the back side here. That's because I put pressure on it when I sewed it into position. And now 
the button is permanently into position. So now my cat can enjoy and just rest on the inside of this and this is a crochet uh, pet bed. Again the size is, uh, varies on the size of your pet but overall I really enjoyed working on this and in fact I did this whole project in a matter of a half a day. Um, it's really not that hard to do and as long as you have your materials of the yarn and uh, the quilt batting I think you're good to go. So until next time have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.